everyone, or should I say, hello PCT. <laughs> anyway, it's been a while. Um, today I want to go over my final loadout, um, my PCT loadout. I did a, I did an initial loadout video at the beginning, so you you do know how I started the hike and what I was using. But you also know if you've been watching that I have. I came off trail and, and went back on. So, um, and I did change. I did change quite a few things. So, let's go over it piece by piece. Oh, it's a big one. This, this pack is heavy. Not, not the pack itself, but what's in it. So, <clears throat> let's start with the outside. So on the outside, uh, first of all, this pack is an Osprey. <clears throat> on the outside, I, I it's in the laundry right now, but I have a little pack towel that I hang for, uh, you know, snot rag or sweat or or whatever. Um, <laughs> I have a um, I don't I I've been trying to keep it minimal. So the other thing that's not on here is my my clip, my what's called capture Peak Designs capture. Um, because it's on my other pack because I'm getting ready to go out on a hike. Um, so going through the stuff on the outside, in this pocket down here, I have hand sanitizer. Hope you can see all this. I guess not, eh? Um, I have a sun, sun block. Uh, now here the thing is, um, um, this is bigger than it's supposed to be. So I was using this because I couldn't find the smaller one, and I I went along, I went with this. It's much heavier than I wanted it to be. I use what's called Live Strong. Live Strong, uh, the zinc oxide molecules are much bigger. So that means that the the sunblock actually stays on the outside of your skin. It stays on top, which is which is nice. I don't know why I thought I had to mention that, but I did. And then I have my <clears throat> my Nightcore NU25 headlamp, and I put my own shock cord on there to make it lighter uh, because the the big fat band that comes with it is quite heavy. So that's good. What else we got in here? I use uh, I do use bug juice. This one's a little spray bottle that it's much smaller and much lighter than the ones you get in the store. Like if you get one off the shelf in the store and just stick it in your pack, it'll be at least double or three times uh, the weight the weight of this. So, okay, moving on. In this other pocket, I have my gloves. I, I'm a firm believer in, in using gloves for hiking. It protects your hands. Uh, as you get older, your hands you your hands will love you. Also, in that pocket, what I do just for convenience, so that I can just sort of stop and scoop, is my water filter. So I use a bee free a bee free water filter with a one liter bladder, and I also I'll go well, I'll show you in a minute. I have I'll show you my whole water system that I use, but this is the the central part of it. Uh, what else? Pockets. So my pockets. Let's look at that. Okay, so umbrella. Obviously, I have to have an umbrella. I'm somebody, one of the few, who insists on having an umbrella no matter what. In especially on the PCT. In the sun, it's 20 degrees. Under this umbrella, in the sun, it's at least 20 degrees cooler. And there were days when, oh, I, I tell you, I mean. And then obviously in the rain. Obviously, in town, if it's raining or if it's sunny, um, and another thing, especially in the desert, if there's a group of people and you want to go pee and there's nowhere to hide because you're in the desert, you just lay this down, like you open it up, you lay it down, and you squat down behind it, and, and uh, you do your stuff. Your stuff. Uh, so I'm going on the other side, I always keep hair bands, extra hair bands. I got a lot of hair. I go through a lot of bands. Uh, they also double up as other for other things. Um, this is my bag tag for my for my PCT through hike, and I also have my cool cloth, which I'm a big believer in. It saves on toilet paper. 
And what else? I have my cross here, which are my camp shoes of choice. I uh, have been looking for other shoes to try, but I so far I haven't found anything that I liked that was even remotely close to um, the comfort and, and the weight, uh, mostly the weight uh, of these of these shoes of the Crocs. The Tevas, the Tevas are bad; they're a little heavier. Tevas you can actually hike in, and they're good day shoes. Sorry, I'm trying to get these off. I'm having a hard time. Usually I have no difficulty when I get into camp, getting my uh, shoes off and getting into my camp gear, my camp shoes. Uh, what else? Okay, so in the, in the front pocket, we're in the front pocket now. I have a little dining bag that holds my tent stakes. Uh, I do use all eight tent stakes in case there's a storm or it's windy, which on quite a few occasions has happened this year. Uh, I also did something a little different this year is I used for the two vestibules, be vestibules, did I say that right? I've been told I say it wrong. I've been told I say vegetables. Anyway, so I, I used two of those just for the outside for the doors for the for the vestibules and then I use uh, six of the, the smaller ones, the mini, the mini groundhogs. I've tried various steaks, and these are just all around the best, the best ones that I've found that work for me. I also, unlike, unlike a lot of other people uh, with Z-Pax tents, I do bring a ground sheet for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, if you're in a cowboy camp, you can use this. If you are going to, if you're in a storm and you need a, a quick, you need some shelter, you need to cover yourself up if you're getting wet or it's inclement weather and it's coming sideways, this is handy just to wrap around you. Also, in the desert, sand, people don't, they think sand, they think of sand as soft and nice and everything else, but so, sand is, is like glass. They make glass out of it. Each one of these things are so sharp. Uh, they will rip through the Dyneema. I'm sorry, but I've seen two people on trail this year blow holes in their in their uh, Dyneema tents in the bathtub. So I do believe in these. I do. And I did speak with uh, Z-Packs at Trail Days, and, and they're kind of of the same idea. They leave it up to you, but yeah. Um, these, which I only ever used a couple times, but mostly for for warmth. And what, are, what these are are rain gloves. But what I did was I used them on top of my merino. Uh, as you know, a merino gets wet, it'll still keep you warm, but I put them on underneath and then just put these on top. And voila, I have wind gloves, I have rain gloves, whatever I need. They're pretty handy. What else we got in here? I have a knock vecto, what's called a knock vecto. This is a two liter, this particular one with a wider, <clears throat> this has the, the bee free opening, the wider opening, unlike the Sawyer, which is a narrower. These are harder to get, but I did manage to find this one in Julian. Uh, this one leaks so right along the seam. It's just a little drip, drip, drip kind of leak, so it still works and I still kept it. For when they needed to, but I'd always keep it on the outside of the pack because I didn't want to get stuff inside of the pack wet. And I would never put it inside the nylon feed anyway. So there's that. That came in handy quite a few times uh, during forced, forced water carries, etc. Anyways, what else have we got down here? That's it for the front pocket. Now the brain, the lid, whatever you want to call it. I have my, my uh, poop kit which is, it still has toilet paper in it, strangely enough. <laughs> and, and so I use that. I also have another little mini hand sanitizer, and I also have my, what's called Deuce of Spades. It's the lightest uh, little shovel, little trowel for digging cat holes, which in the desert is really easy to do. Not so much up north. When it was rocky, it was a little more difficult. But we did have some privies up north, too. Uh, also, this year I carried a stove, and I love this stove, this particular stove. I, I've tried two of them. I tried the other one with the 
the jet boil um, stove, just the stove though, not the whole pot and everything. And the reason I did that was for uh, efficiency, I thought. It turns out though that if you don't use a pot with these fins on it, it, it wasn't that efficient. So I thought, what the hell, I'm, what am I doing? I'm, I'm going and having to buy bigger canisters anyways, which I didn't want to do. Uh, on the PCT, it's not unusual to be out there for a week at a time. Uh, some of these carry, or some of these carries, like some of these distances between resupply points. So this is called a mini mo by Jetboil. Love it, it's a good stove. Uh, I won't be using it again. It will be cold soaking all the way. Uh, this is my first aid kit. Kind of tiny, I know. It's a Dyneema uh, bag and without ripping everything apart, uh, I have some uh, <clears throat> Imodium in here in case, you know, I get Giardia or something. I have sanitary wipes, I have um, band-aids, I have gauze, only two though, two gauze, that's all you need. And there's some more band-aids, leukotape, moleskin, what else, more gauze, more sanitary wipes. And more legal tape. Okay, so yeah, I've got a uh, pretty simple, simple first aid kit. This is waterproof uh, bag, so I'm not too worried about it. But I did keep it in another plastic bag just to be on the safe side because I wanted to keep this very, very dry. So, what else have we got in here? Oh yeah, I use a um, case for glasses for both reading my reading glasses and my sunglasses. It's just a, a hard case, so it, I don't have to worry about it banging into things or whatever. And let's see what else we got here. This is a Ben's uh, bug net. It goes over your head, over your hat. There were a lot of bugs on the PCT. Um, would, would I say there's more than the AT? Um, yeah, in sections, yeah, there, there was. Uh, but I guess it just depends on, on where you where you were on trail. So yeah, definitely. Okay, moving along. Let's go to the inside of the pack and see what we got inside. First thing, which I like to do, and this is also going to kind of reveal to you how I pack my pack. I do have a video out on that, on, on how I like to set up my pack and where the weight is the best distributed. Um, so anyways, but there's some things, you know, first in, first out, like last in, first out kind of thing, um, first use kind of thing. So I always like to keep my puffy handy near the top in case I need to switch into it really quickly. The weather can change, especially up in the mountains. It can change. Then, then under that, I have my my food bag, which is is loaded with food right now because I'm like I say going out to uh, to Algonquin. Um, I'll be cold soaking at, in Algonquin, but generally I keep a combination of food in here. Also, in here is my spoon, my long handled spoon. I use a titanium spoon, very light. Love it. I use the polished the polished end, which doesn't matter. It's just easier to clean. Then there's my tent. Uh, I'm still rocking the, the Z-Pax duplex. Love this tent, always will. Um, I have a new one coming, a different one, that I'll talk to you about when it gets here. Uh, it's not here yet, but I did, I did uh, order one. So that's my tent. That tent is one pound, one ounce maybe, like 17 ounces. And I also, I do keep a Nile Fume liner, bag liner, that way I don't, I don't use a pack cover. I refuse to use a pack cover. I think they're absolutely useless. In fact, I think they hurt you. Uh, they collect at the bottom. They'll collect a little, like water. Um, yeah, I've seen my family do it. I've seen lots of people doing it, and I just don't understand why. Uh, something different for me this year was I uh, used a heavier pad. This is a Thermarest X-Therm, NeoAir X-Therm, uh, NXT. This is the new, the new one, the lighter one, with, and the warmer one. Uh, the old NXT used to have an R rating, an R value of 6.9. 
This one has 7.4 and it's two ounces lighter. So it's like 15 ounces or something. And I really enjoyed it. I needed it when, when I was up in the mountains because it can get really cold at night, uh, especially when you get up 10,000 feet or higher. Uh, it gets it gets quite cold, so this this was a nice thing to have. Would I normally use this stuff? No, this stuff's very heavy compared to my my regular sub 10 pound base, uh, and I'll go over that in a second too. Uh, where's my pillow? My pillow should be next. Did I not put the pillow? Oh, here it is. Okay, yeah. Sorry. I didn't put the pillow in. <laughs> Sorry. I use a Cedar Summit Eros. Arrow's pillow, one of the lightest, but, but more importantly, this pillow, for me at least, uh, I like because of, of the height of it. If I have, if, if my head's too far down like this all night, uh, I'll wake up and I'll have really, I'll have a kink in my shoulder or my neck. This pillow's perfect for that. It's uh, one of my luxury items. Uh, sorry, but you know, everybody has them, luxury items. This is usually right there. That's why I, that's why I didn't see it. I was like, hey, uh, this is my duty bag. I try to keep it as small as I can. I only have, like I say, I only have two bags, two stuff sacks. Like this is one of them, and both of mine are Dyneema. I have fuel repair kit in here. I have um, oh, some more ammonia. What's that doing in there? Should be in my first aid kit. Okay, no worries. Uh, I also have in here the straps for my for my quilt. I have water treatment tablets as a backup for my uh, for my water treating. I have earplugs that I keep handy. I have um, a Dyneema repair repair tape for my tent or my whatever I have that's Dyneema. Um, my it's purple. Don't you know it's purple? Oh, my little toothbrush. It just folds like that and it goes like that. And then uh, toothpaste, a little baby toothpaste. So this is, this usually isn't in my ditty bag though. I don't know why it is right now. Usually I keep that in the, in the lid or outside or on, you know, in the front pocket just because I like to have it handy. Sometimes if I eat after lunch or whatever I, I, and I really want to get particles out and stuff, I, I'll leave this out. Um, a little bit of a luxury, I don't have to have it, I have to have it, is a hairbrush. I have so much hair, my hair is so thick. Um, this, I really like this brush. I was using another brush last year on the AT and then I switched over to this. On the AT, somebody had told me it was better and it was. Uh, what else we got here? I have a little mirror, a baby, baby sized mirror that I used for checking for ticks and stuff so that I don't have to rely on somebody else to do it. Um, and I also have in here my, I do this, these are my SD cards and they're in a little waterproof case. Um, it opens up and you've got enough room for a dozen big, big uh, cards like SD cards. And then I also have 24 slots for 24 of the micro SD cards. Uh, right now it's pretty loaded. It's got a lot of the stuff from the PCT on it. Uh, but yeah, I like the fact that it's waterproof. It's it's rubber. It's got a rubber gasket all the way around, which is which is very nice. I like to have that. Uh, what isn't in my ditty bag right now that I, I do carry when I took it out uh, is stuff from my lungs. I have COPD, so uh, it was really important for me once I got up past 10,000 feet to have my puffers and I have a little chamber um, for you people that have asthma or whatever, you know what I'm talking about. It's a little chamber and you, and you push the puffer and it puts the stuff into the chamber and it, it aerates it for you so that you don't get hypertensive uh, because those puffers, if you just take them and use them and put them next to your mouth, uh, you can go into a hypertension for up to a half an hour, a very dangerous situation, especially if you're up at altitude. So. Uh, the chamber's quite, it was quite large, you know, like, with all of that, with my lung stuff in here, this bag was, it was close to full, so, I had three puffers, my chamber, and I also had another little applicator 
um, which punched holes in, in Spiriva. Spiriva is a little capsule that I took once a day. But you know, honestly, towards the end of the hike, I didn't even need that. My, my lungs just adapted to it. So anyway, that's my ditty bag. The only other bag I keep inside my pack, except my, well, my food bag, and that, is my electronics bag. So this is my electronics bag. Again, it's Dyneema. It's a top, a top opening Dyneema. And in here I have my 30 watt, 30 watt charger, wall charger with cable for my phone. Let's see what else. I have a Nightcore MB20000 covered in stickers, <laughs> PCT stickers, because you gotta have stickers. What can I say? Uh, this is great. I love this. It's lighter than, than the Anchor. Uh, it works really well. It charges faster. So like I say, it does take 30 watts. Uh, I did try to put 60 into it last year and I blew it up. I had to buy, this is actually my second one. <laughs> I blew up the first one, unfortunately. I also have cables in here, uh, USB-C to USB-C. I have USB-A to USB-C. I have my microphone for my, my little pocket camera goes in here, and this microphone just clips on. Um, what else? I have a backup battery for, for my remote, for my camera. I also use, well, it's up there, okay, it's a stand disk. I use a hard drive, a two terabyte hard drive, and I use a dongle to transfer all my projects, all of my, my videos and my, my images to that. So this is for redundancy. And what this does is I when I go to a town and I have Wi-Fi, my phone will automatically upload all of the images and, and videos uh, to the cloud. So that that's my number one line of defense of saving and stuff. My number two is to use this and to put it onto a flash drive. Uh, so that I have that drive. I will not use that drive for anything else except the PCT. So it has all of my, my DaVinci, all of my uh, LumaFusion, all my, my, whole, my whole Adobe system that I use for editing, as well as um, other things that I decided to just put on there that are in relation to the PCT, like Yogi's list, for example. Yogi has a really great list of, of uh, ha amazing resources for the PCT, and I'm pretty sure everybody uses them. So that's pretty much what's in here. I now, this year, will have one less cable. I won't be using this cable anymore because I'm switching one of my items so that it doesn't use that. And what that is is my headlamp. I'm switching over to the new UL uh, headlamp by Nightcore this year. Uh, it uses, it uses USB-C cable. Now it is actually uh, 8 grams heavier than my old one, but it has 10 times the battery life, so I literally will charge it in town and I won't have to charge it again until I go back to a town. That is a really good thing for me. Also it's 600 lumens instead of 400 lumens, so it's brighter. Uh, which I don't use very often anyways, but I like the fact that it's there if I need it. And so I'm going to switch that. So what I'm saying is a few grams difference in weight, that cable actually covers it. So it's the same weight, but it's a new headlamp. But we'll talk about that later. I'll be doing a load out of my Algonquin, of my Algonquin hike. Right, probably right after this, so there's that. And let's see, what else have we got? My my baby, my absolute favorite. Oh my god. Oh my oh come to mommy. So this is my enlightened equipment zero degree monster monster quilt. I mean six inches of loft. When this thing lofts up, when I, I leave it loose, it'll loft up to, to like this. It's in my tent with my body and, and this, I mean, I'm practically filling up the entire tent. People were laughing at me at trail days because it was like 110 degrees and I've got this thing in there. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, it's purple on the outside and red on the inside. I love it. I, I won't use it again on the PCT. Uh, I think it was too much. It was just too much for, for what I needed. Uh, going further, here, let me just pull this out. So this is my my 19 bag, ready to go. 
you might you might recognize this shirt from from the trail from last year and this year. Um, not too much this year I wore it, but last year I certainly did. I wore my Echo Sun hoodie most of the time this year. <clears throat> I have an extra pair of socks that I use. I have a buff in here. I have a rain top and rain pants that I use. I have an extra pair of underwear. Just going through this. I have my merino wool sleep, sleep top that you've probably seen in some of the videos as well. Uh, I wear that every night. I like to, I, I'm a bit of a funny person that way. I, at nighttime, always do like a sponge bath. I use wet wipes and I'll, I'll wipe everything down and then I'll get into my, my night, night clothes. Uh, I have a little different idea about that, which I'll go over uh, later. But for now, uh, this is what I used. And all of this stuff is at the bottom. This stays at the bottom. And at the very bottom, which isn't here right now, I took it out. Um, I kept another bag, a Ziploc, right at the very bottom, always. And it had my passport in it. It had receipts that I needed, like important receipts. Um, and... And I just did that for extra, like, dryness. I wanted to make sure my passport didn't get wet. My ID, you know, it's plastic, mind you, but stuff that I really needed, you know, my valuables. Uh, I kept them in the bottom of this as well. So last but not least, let's talk about the pack. Uh, I'm going to do a full review of this pack. Oh, and oh, and Baxter. Sorry, Baxter always sits here in the pouch because he uh, likes to see, he likes to, to watch. See, look, he's all happy. Yeah, buddy. You got this. <laughs> Sorry, I talked to him. I talked to him all day. Um, have a seat, buddy. Have, relax for a while. Okay, so this here is the Osprey Exos Pro. And I might have talked to you about this already a little bit. Uh, earlier and what this is is these, this is the next generation uh, the pro generation of the Exos. The Exos in the Asia are two of, of um, Osprey's what we would call ultralight line of, of packs. Um, this particular one is is not the blue one. I'm, I don't know if you remember the blue one that I started with. It was a um, four pound pack I believe four pounds. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but this one, the Pro, I picked this up at Goat's Beard in Mazama near Winthrop um, in Washington. And this pack weighs two pounds. You take the lid off and it weighs 1.9 pounds. It's lighter than the ULA. It's the same weight as, as some of the HMGs. It's, it's lighter than so many of the cottage company packs now that it's just absolutely ridiculous. This thing is amazing. It, they switched over to a ripstop nylon this time around. I'll just go over a quickly, uh, like I say, I'm going to do an in-depth review of this pack. Uh, it, it has thinner straps. I hate, I absolutely despise this um, front pocket because of the way it cl it's clamped down. Uh, it's not allowed to stretch out because it's always tightening down no matter what you do, which drives me crazy. Uh, but anyways, and then I took some purple shock cord and I laced it in between, like around all these daisy chains. And I did this for a purpose because I really enjoyed that about the ULA. The ULA had shock cord going outside of the pack in the front. And uh, I loved it for lashing my, my Crocs or just hanging extra things. Maybe I wanted to, uh, sometimes I would hang my tent off this during the day to let it dry while I'm walking, uh, especially up in the mountains, like wide open vistas where the sun's there. Yes, I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, it doesn't have the extra pocket underneath the lid. It doesn't have closed, it only has one zipped pocket here. The other pocket is a, an open, open, it's not, it doesn't close, it doesn't lock up at all. Uh, it doesn't have the loops for the tent down the bottom, so I had to resort to putting my tent either in the, in the side pocket, which I did quite often, or inside the pack, depending on how much room I had in the pack. This is a 55, no, this is 
55? Yeah, 55. The other's a 58. Um, so I use this, I really enjoyed it. Uh, will I use it again? Nope. No, I won't. Not, not because I didn't like it, just because you use what you need. Uh, like I said, I'm not going with the heavier quilt next year when I go back. I'm not going to use the heavier pad. I've decided against all these things. I'm not going to use sleep, sleep gear. Um, I'm, so there's a whole change of clothes right there that I'll be eliminating. Um, so there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of changes in, in the way I did it. I've learned a lot about the PCT uh, this year from, from hiking it. And um, these are adjustments that you make as you, as you go along which is nice and uh, I'll be I'll be sporting I'll be sporting a new pack of, you know different different quilt different pad less clothing um, I'll be adding a tripod uh, I really missed having a tripod this year for my camera gear and um, probably I'm going to go to a uh, I'm probably going to go back to um, an electronic wireless microphone system so that I'm allowed, so I can do something like this. I don't have it right now. I, I sent it away. A friend has it, but I'll get I'll be getting it back. It's um, right now. I'm just using a boom mic. I, I hope you can hear me. Um, I mean, I'm going to turn this up and post anyway. In fact, no, I can see the levels from here. It's pretty quiet. <clears throat> so I'll crank that up. But, so that's it. That's my. That's my loadout for the PCT. So having said all of this, what do you think all of that weight as a, for base weight? Like remove the food from the equation because food's never included in the base weight. But what was the base, what do you think the base weight for all this was? Well, I'm going to tell you. The exact, oh yeah, this is Garmin, I forgot to tell you, I have that too. Um, the base weight for this was 12.2 pounds. It was, it was much heavier than I wanted, than I was hoping for. Uh, to compare, I'm going to be down under 10 next year. Um, oh, look at this. This ripped. I didn't see that. Huh. Okay. 12.2 um, pounds. That was, that's the entire loadout that you see here. And I can easily trim three, three and a half pounds off that. Uh, and I will next year. So anyway, thanks for watching. If you're still watching, you rock. I think I'm just going to say that every time now. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll see you next time.